Uh huh. I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah, man. Got a radio show. Do you understand that? I'm telling you, God been big in my life. I'm not going to kid you. I'm telling you, and he'll do the same thing for you. God, God is a gentleman. You know, I, I want to I wanna point that out to you. God is an absolute gentleman. He will not come in unless he's invited. He don't just barge into your life. He gives us the power of choice. You know, if you say you got it, I don't need you, he lets you have it. If you say, I need you, come see about me, he right there. It's just a real simple thing, man. So I always say to people this, if you've gotten yourself into something, and please know I have, I, I, I was stuck. I thought a couple of times, well, might not make it past this one. But then if I don't make it past it, what's going to happen? And then I held on to this little thing that my mother kept talking to me about. She said, sometimes, son, when you ain't, ain't got nothing else in you, just hope. She said, just hope it'll be all right. You know, and what I've learned in my life is that hope is the beginning of faith. Hope is just, is there a possibility out there for me? I sure hope something happened. See, uh, hope hope is okay, man. Because like I say, for me, the way I've lived my life, hope was the beginning of faith. It was just the idea. It's just the thought that something could change for me, that something could be a little bit different for me, that maybe, man, just maybe for some reason, I could be saved, I could be rescued, things could turn around, it could head in the other direction, maybe I could quit messing up, maybe somebody will forgive me, maybe somebody will just say, all right, I don't know, but I can't count the times I've been in that position, but then Once I hope a little bit, and then I remember also my mother because she was a Sunday school teacher. She taught me the most valuable lesson I've ever learned in my life. Nothing has been greater in my life than my faith. She taught me to pray. Mama used to say, when it get real dark for you, son, prayer changes things. She said, when you seem like you lost and you can't find your way, stop and pray. She said, because prayer changes things. You know, when you get a point in your life when you've done all you can do and you can't do no more and you just don't know what to do next, she says, stop, son, pray. And combine that prayer with that hope that you got. She said, because that hope is the beginning of faith. She said, if you pray just hoping, she said, if God come through for you, that'll give you confidence that he can do it again. And then after a while, you quit hoping. She said, you start believing. She said, and that's when you're on to something. If you can turn that hope into belief, that hope into faith, the ability to believe in something that you can't see. But the key, though, to faith is you're believing in something that you can't see. See, hoping a little bit different for me. Now, I'm pretty sure, like I say oftentimes, I tell a lot of people who can explain this thing a lot better than I can to you. But just from my side of it, being as real as I can be, be with you. See, hope helps, man. If you ain't strong enough to have faith, have hope. And then if you pray with some hope and God answers your prayer, then that hope gains a little confidence. And after a while, that confidence becomes faith. Now it ain't just hoping, but I'm believing. I'm believing in something that I cannot see. Faith has been the key to my entire existence, even when I didn't have any. It was faith as I look back on it that has gotten me here. And not just faith, but my faith. See, you will only get to where you're going in your life based on your faith. See, a lot of people get the word faith confused. Like, what's your faith? Uh, And then they start going down this whole list of all these different religions out here. But really, in essence, man, when I talk to people about faith, I'm talking to you about your, 
your belief? How much do you believe in the unseen? How much do you believe in the things you can't see? How much do you believe in the impossible? How much do you believe? See, because faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. Faith is the core of all that is happening to me today. It is the faith that I have in my relationship with God that enables me to just oftentimes, if I stay on the right course and believe a certain way and act a certain way, his blessings just pour. They just come. And it comes in a lot of little ways, too, I've started to notice. See, it ain't just, a lot of people think blessings is money. Uh, No, man, that ain't it. It's coverage. It's every time my plane lands safe. It's every time they predict bad weather and I get up in the sky and it don't be no bad weather. You know, this this is favor. These are blessings that get poured out to me. Somebody call me and offer me something. Not money, but an opportunity. You know, some somebody say, hey man, I don't know, but I sent this to you. I thought you might be interested in it. Somebody will send me a scripture or somebody will send me something. That's favor. And it always comes at a time when I need it the most. That's favor. That's pouring out blessings. Now, I'm also the recipient of a lot of other blessings, too. You know, I've been blessed with health. That's amazing blessing, man. I've been blessed with a spirit of not quitting. I've been blessed with the ability to shoulder huge amounts of responsibility. See, blessings come a lot of ways. But once you tie in to God, once you tie in and you start doing the best you can do and you start asking for him to make you a better person, to help shape and mold you into the kind of man or person that he wants you to be, you'd be amazed what God can do with you, man, if you just invite him in and allow him to be a part of your life. I mean, what you got to lose out there? Come on. If you're sitting in the cell this morning, why, why would you not change? You have a chance to turn your life around with a relationship with God. What you waiting on? Are you going to just keep doing it like that, huh? Really? Come on, man. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you not allow God to be a part of your life so you can get to where he wants you to be? God got some big plans for you. If he didn't, you wouldn't keep waking up. From the executive producers of Hell and Gone comes a new podcast investigating the serial murders orchestrated by South African cult leader Cecilia Stein. She conditioned them to be monsters. In the world of murderous cults, if Charles Manson is king, Cecilia Stein is queen. She was telling people the Bible says she must go and kill, but actually she was taking revenge. Listen to Queen Havoc and her murder cult on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Israel Gutierrez. I'm hosting a new podcast called Four Years of Heat. It takes you to Miami from 2010 to 2014 when LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade set the NBA ablaze. You know, have an opportunity to team up with the best trio to ever play the game of basketball. We'll take you inside those four monumental years with behind the scenes access and insight about one of the greatest teams ever assembled. Four Years of Heat on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Last season, millions tuned into the Betrayal podcast to hear a shocking story of deception. I'm Andrea Gunning, and now we're sharing an all-new story of betrayal. Ashley Litton was helping her husband set up a business Venmo account when she discovered a terrible secret. I saw a hidden folder, and I opened it. What the hell did I just see? Listen to season two of Betrayal on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 